Hi everyone! Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's happy. I hope everyone is hot. It's been absolutely sweltering here um, and it's been lovely so I'm not going to complain about it because I love it. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Just want to say hello to you and welcome you to the Friday Night Curry Club. Um, so we are cooking a lamb dish tonight and it's going to be very delicious and very exciting. But before I do that and before I start talking through the recipe and getting cooking, I just want to say a very quick hello to everybody. Um, and I just want to know who is joining me. I want to know where you are in the world. I want you to say hello. So please do start typing away and say hello. Tell me what you're doing, whether you're cooking with me, whether you're just watching. Um, and this is your opportunity to ask as many questions as you like as we go throughout the um, session today. Ask me questions that you want to know, whether it's to do with this dish or anything else that you might want to know. Um, so please do give us a shout out. Um, have we got people waiting to say We've hello? David from Istanbul. Hi, David from Istanbul. Is that... No, it's no, it's not Tread the Globe. Hi, David. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We have Bromwolf from the West Midlands. Hi, Bromwolf. You have been doing some serious cooking. I have been, um, and you've been sharing it on the app, and I've seen a few of your pictures. They've been, they look delicious. Thank you for joining us, um, and thank you for um, sharing your recipes and cooking with me as well. So, welcome. Um, Mary from the Bay Area in California. We also Hi, Mary from California. Um, we have. We've, we've got, got a few Californians. It sounds have like Steve Wilcox from Bristol. Hi, Steve. Welcome. Thank you for your email last week. Um, more than happy. If you've got anything that you want to share with me, you can always drop me an email and so on. Um, but Steve was just mentioning last week that. It, um, I don't really talk about the side dishes um, and I just focus on the main dish when we when I put up the um, YouTube post. So I've started to share that side dish with you. Um, the only reason that happened was the side dish sort of was something that I thought, oh, I should really put something in there so that you can have a nice meal at the end of your Friday. Um, it wasn't really that thought through. So I'm going to start doing that so you know what the main dish is and what the side dish is if I'm going to be doing one that week. So thank you for that feedback. It was very helpful. We've got Lana from Jamaica. Hi, Lana from Jamaica. How are you doing? Lovely to have you join. Thank you for coming. Elaine from Ontario. Johnny from Kent. Bobby, Scotland. Adriana in Mexico. We've got Adriana in Mexico. How are you doing? Lovely to join us. Thank you for saying hello. I hope you're well. Gigi in Dartford. Alan in Leicester. We've got lots of people from the UK. Alan in Leicester. Gigi in where? In Dartford. Dartford. Hi, how are you doing? Um, let me also know if you're cooking with me or um, if you're just watching because I know, uh, well, Throughout the week, people do tell me if they're going to be cooking or if they're going to be watching. Um, there's also other questions that come up. So a few people ask whether they can do this dish with chicken because they're not either they don't like lamb or they just haven't couldn't get hold of any lamb. Um, other people, what I try to do is always give you alternatives as well. So um, what I don't want to do is just say this is a lamb gray that's what we're cooking what I want you to do is let me know if you are a vegetarian or a vegan or whatever I will always um, try and help make substitutions so that you can join in the the curry club but just cook something that suits you and your family so um, always get in touch throughout the week or um, just keep up to date with my posts because I do sort of put all alternative um, recipe ideas on there for you so welcome everybody thank you for um joining thank you for um saying hello um have we got any more that i need to quickly say hello to before we get started hi i'm not sure who it is but somebody from johannesburg welcome yeah. lovely to have you from south monica africa joining us norway. hi monica in norway how are you doing um we seem to be getting more and more um, people from that sort of region starting to explore the spice world and explore Indian food, which is amazing. Um, Brian from Chicago. Hi, Brian from Chicago. 
I w I've never been to Chicago and I really want to come and, and, and visit at some point. And we've got Paul Morris, who is Dominic Morris's husband. Hello, Paul Morris, Dominic's husband. How are you doing? I don't know if you're cooking. You're obviously a little bit later than we are here in the UK. So, um, hello to Anthony as well from Brum. Hi, Anthony from Bir Birmingham, my home region. Hello, welcome, and lovely to have you join us. Sue. Oh, hi, Sue. I know you're cooking chicken, if I remember co co correctly. Um, so this dish is something that you can sort of mix and match and change to um, choose the ingredients that you want to use, but it is a really lovely one. We've got Gary from Wolves. Magic. Hi, Gary from Wolves. Magic from Cork. Magic from Cork. from Cork in Ireland. Lovely. Welcome, everybody. Just welcome to my kitchen. It's lovely to have so many people join. Um, please do spread the word. Tell your friends and family to start logging on to the Friday Curry Club because it's just so wonderful to have so many people from across the world join in. Um, okay, so the dish we're cooking today is Graiwali lamb or lamb grai. Um, so it's a lamb dish. And that's what I'm using. Um, but you can use chicken. I would recommend thigh meat if you're using chicken. Um, you can use pork if you wanted to. You can use beef. Um, if you want to use veg, there's a slightly different technique that you would probably get, work through. So if you are using veg, please do let me know and I can talk you through what you need to do. But essentially, um, grai, if the word translates to a grai, which is the cooking vessel, which is this. So it's lamb cooked in a grai, um, but it's actually a two-stage process. Um, this, when I do my classes and when I teach people, I almost like to tell them it's, it's essentially a backwards curry. Um, most curries and a lot of the dishes that we've cooked together are all about the onions, ginger, garlic, you make your masala, you add your protein to it, and away you go. This dish is very, very different in that you add your onions at the end, um, and you can cook them to maintain a little bit of crispness, or you can cook them right down until they're lovely and soft. So it really depends on how you like your dish. Um, one thing that's quite important about this dish is um, it's all about how we infuse lots of garlic and ginger flavors into the meat. And I'm going to show you um, how I do it, and it's a really lovely way of doing it. And if you are cooking at home, you will just get the lovely aromatics and aromas coming through. And um, I'll get you to taste the meat as well once it's cooked. And that will sort of hopefully highlight how amazing you can, um, without even a marinade, without doing anything like that, you can actually really harness some lovely flavours into the meat itself. So, um, are we ready to cook before I get going? Actually, have you all got your little, a little drink? Seeing as it's Friday, I've got some um, berry cider today. Very different for me. Um, a little bit like fruit juice, really. So, I'm, I'm having that. Um, let me know if you're having a little drink today and what you're drinking. Um, so, are we ready to cook? I want to take my steer from you guys so that I don't sort of rush through it and you're left wondering what I'm doing. Um, if I just pan through what I've got here, just so that you know, um, I did share obviously the recipe and the method with you. So what I've got here is I've got some ghee, which is clarified butter. I have got my lamb. Now, if I just very quickly talk about the lamb. So in the recipe, I say um, use either leg or neck fillet. Um, I'm actually using leg today just because that's what I could get hold of. I usually use neck fillet because I, it's my preferred cut of lamb. It cooks really well. It's got a lovely bit of fat running through it and it just renders itself, especially in this dish, so that the meat cooks and it's very, very sort of soft and gentle and delicious. Um, but I am using um, leg today just because that's what I could get. Also, neck fillet seems to have ramped up in price recently. It used to be a cut that nobody bought and it was really cheap, whereas now it's actually quite expensive. But 
hey ho, it is what it is. So I've got some um, leg, um, la 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 la, leg of lamb there. What I've done is I've trimmed the fat off. I don't want too much fat in there. There's already fat sort of running through the meat, but I've taken off the big, the horrible it's bits. Extra lean meat is good. Um, with dishes like this, I tend to not go for extra lean just because I do want a little bit of the fat from the meat rather than adding more fat to the dish, some of the fat from the meat to come through because that's where the flavour lies. Um, some extra lean cuts can dry out very quickly as well. So, um, but obviously if you're on a calorie reduced diet or whatever it might be that you choose to do that, that's, that's not a problem. So there's my lamb. I've got my spice tin here. Now the key spices for this dish are coriander seeds and cumin seeds. So there's not a lot of spices in this. We're going to use relatively quite a lot of those two spices. Um, so we're using three teaspoons of each, which is actually quite a lot when it comes in, in when you're talking about spices in general. We're also going to use turmeric, some um, chili powder as well. I've got some garlic, which I've peeled, so garlic cloves, and I've got some ginger, and I've got my chilies as well. Um, I've got some fresh tomatoes, which I'm going to use to make the masala, and then I've got an onion, and then I've got a little bit of coriander for the garnish at the end. So, is everybody still with me? Oh, and salt. Always, always got my salt. So, is everybody still with me? Are we all good? Are we good to go? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pan on. Um, this might seem a little bit odd to a lot of people um, because it is, it's quite sort of, it doesn't feel like the natural thing to do. But all I'm going to do with the lamb is I'm going to put my lamb into the pan. I'm going to throw in my garlic as it is. No chopping, no nothing. Whoopsie. No chopping or anything they're going to go in whole and then I'm going to grate in some ginger and I'm going to put a little bit of salt in and then I'm going to turn it right down to the lowest setting and I'm going to just pop it onto the the back stove which is my smallest hob and I'm just going to let that simmer away and that way we'll get lots of flavors lots of those garlic and ginger flavors infusing into the meat and it will cook until it's really really soft and tender and delicious so Let's do that first of all. So if you're cooking with me, now's the time. So grab your lamb and let's just pop that into your pan. Um, one thing I will t say is there is no oil in the pan. So this is what I mean. A lot of people sort of think, oh, that's a bit weird, but we're not putting any oil in there. So literally all you are putting in there is your lamb your garlic, which I'm throwing in whole. I'm using five cloves because I like garlic. And then I'm going to grate in some ginger. Can you sub parsley for coriander? No, you can't really sub parsley for coriander because they are completely different flavors. Um, it's quite funny that you say that, but when my, my mum quite often says when she first came to the UK, um, they couldn't get coriander. It, was, it just wasn't a herb that was used. So just to get a little bit of that garnish, a little bit of that greenery into the um, finished dish, she used to use parsley. But actually, if you haven't got it, just I would miss it out. Don't worry about it. I think that question came, or somebody asked me that on social I don't think I responded. Is that... Was that you? If that was you, my apologies. Right, so into the pan. I'm just going to go over it again. Your meat has got your lamb, garlic. I'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit of salt. Could you substitute lamb for goat? You can substitute lamb for goat, yeah. Quite often in a lot of Indian dishes, goat is actually the preferred meat. It's much leaner. Um, it's not heavily fatty um, and it's just a nicer meat. So, hang on, I'm just going to show you very quickly. That's what it looks like. And that's what it should look like. So it's all just gone in there and we are going to very... ...that simmer away. I'm going to give it a stir. I think we've got more questions. Well, just say hello to Christopher, who's a 
Hi, Christopher. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. It's absolutely lovely to have you join us. Let us know where you're joining us from as well. West Hampstead in London. From West Hampstead, not too far away from me. Um, thank you for joining us and thank you for saying hello. It's great to have you on board. Um, if you're cooking today, hopefully next week you will be cooking once you've sort of got the gist of what we're doing. Okay, so the meat has gone in there, the lamb's gone in there, the salt's gone in there, the ginger's gone in there. I'm putting this on my small hob and I'm going to let that cook away. So the lid is on. I know it feels a bit weird. It will be fine, I promise you. Famous last words. So the lamb is going in there. So I would say probably 30 or so minutes it should be absolutely done and delicious and, and yummy. So we will come back to that. Is everybody still with me? Yeah, it was. It was Linda. Linda de Pascal who asked you on socials. Linda, I apologise for not getting back to you on social. I did see the question and I must have gone off and done something else, but I, I apologise for that. But yeah, you can't, I wouldn't really substitute one for the other. Okay, all good. S super, super easy so far. You literally chuck it in a pan and turn it on. That's we've what we've got. Lionel is watching from Antigua Barbuda. Hi, Lionel, from where? Antigua. Antigua? Ah, oh, hello, Lionel. Oh, do you know what? I've never been to that part of the world and I am desperate. I am desperate to come and visit you in Antigua, Barbados, all of those Caribbean places. Um, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. It's lovely to have you join us. If you're using goat, should you cook for the same 30 minutes? Um, goat meat um, tends to be you need to cook it for slightly longer but not that much longer it's very similar um, to meat uh, sorry it's very similar to lamb um, but with lamb it can vary quite a lot as well so um, a young lamb for example is about half an hour um, and then when you move on to hog it and mutton and all of that kind of stuff obviously it takes longer with goat it's the same sort of principle usually it should be that sort of half an hour 40 minutes or so but just keep testing it and keep checking it and, and, and hopefully you'll, you'll know when it gets nice and tender. We've got Peter from Botswana. Hi Peter, all the way from Botswana. Amazing, thank you for joining us. Steve has said he's in his mum's kitchen and is using ground cumin and coriander. How much? Okay. Oh, that's right, Steve. You said you were cooking in your mum's kitchen. So you're using ground coriander and ground cumin. Um, I would say two teaspoons of each is going to be enough um, using whole spices which i'll be grinding down so if you're if you're using pre-ground stuff it's it's going to be a little bit more potent so just two teaspoons should be more than enough okay so lamb is on we're going to move on to make the masala um and we are going to just get everything prepped and we're going to cook it in a little while because the cooking of this masala doesn't take very long at all so first things first Let's get our tomatoes all chopped up. Um, I've got three tomatoes that I'm using. I've also got a few that are left over from a salad um, that I had yesterday. And I, rather than putting them in the bin, I'm just going to put them into the masala. Because Mark, Mark said your pots and dish look like a really good quality. Um, where's the best place to shop? So the question is about the, the pans. In terms of my dry or um, the other pan, it's if it's really quite difficult it depends so a lot of people um because you're from all across the globe it's quite He's difficult oh you're in wolves you there you've got your pick of the bunch if you're from wolves there's said, loads of said they only sell spun pans. they only sell spun pans. i think if you get yourself over to birmingham get to soho road um you will find guys like this coming out your ears um, if you want to, drop me a, um, a note afterwards and I might be able to um, just send you some links of places that you can, can get them from. But, but in Wolverhampton, that area, you, Leicester, all of those places, you can get hold of all of these Indian items really, really easily. Okay, so just dicing up my tomato. 
And before you ask, that seeds skin the lot, everything. We don't throw anything away. We don't like to waste anything. So I'm just chopping those up. Now these will cook down in the masala really nice and easily. Obviously, it really depends on the season because sometimes your tomatoes can be really quite, or the skins can be really quite hard. Um, if that's the case, you might want to peel them, but at the moment, everything is fine. So I've got my tomatoes there. My ginger is done. Right, I'm going to also chop up, I'm gonna chop up two chilies, and then the other two chilies, I'm just gonna slice lengthways. So two chilies chopped up nice and fine, which are going to go into the masala. So just coming back to the, those chilies if you do not want this dish to be too spicy then just reduce that so you can reduce it to one chili and then add another chili lengthways chopped up um, if you want it a little bit more spicy obviously you can add um, more chilies and i would probably say add more at this point so chop up three chilies rather than the two but I always say, and I say this every week, Indian food isn't about heat. Um, it is about flavour and warmth and spice and all of that kind of thing. But please don't cook anything that you think is going to be too hot for you and your family. If you do that, you're not going to enjoy the dish. So always make any recipe, any recipe it might be, just to suit your family. Um, so I've got here two chilies that I'm chopping up. And I'm chopping them up nice and finely because I want the chili to blend through that sauce and blend through the masala so it it flavors all of the masala what i don't want is great big chunky bits that i'm going to bite down on because i'm saving those for later so just go through your go over your chilies a couple of times so that they're nice and fine and thin and that includes seeds as well before i get that question so i always include the seed if if you feel that even one chili is going to be too hot for you just use half, just chop it in half and use that. <coughs> Chili's got to the back of my throat. Okay, so I've got my tomatoes done, I've got my chili chopped. And the other two chilies that I've got, which are these two, I'm going to just slit them lengthways. And I'm saving those for later. So I've just chopped them in four. There we go. So just chop those up lengthways. I keep the um, stalk on because you can hold the stalk while you chop it and then take it off. Okay. Right, is everybody still with me? Now, if you're doing this bit, um, if you're cooking your meat at the moment, you're using chicken, it's probably not going to take as long, so do keep an eye on your um, on your meat. Now, what I'm wanting to happen here with the meat is that I want all of the um, juices and the flavour to come from the meat itself, and that's where you're going to get that lovely taste, that really lovely meatiness. It's going to come from the meat, and hopefully in a minute I will show you the juices and all of that comes out of not going to happen this is probably you that it's going to catch on the bottom of the pan it's going to burn that won't happen i promise and i'll show you why it won't happen because you'll get those lovely juices and flavors coming through okay right so is everybody still with me any more questions so far no nope. lovely that's what we like okay in my pestle and mortar i'm also going to get my spices ready so three teaspoons of coriander so those who don't know these are coriander seeds coriander seeds are the seeds of the coriander plant and they are small round beige little seeds so three of those if you're using ground use two this is half a teaspoon okay and then I'm going to start by bashing those up and then I'm going to add my cumin seeds to it. Now, whenever you are grinding your spices, use all of your pestle and mortar and grind them. Don't just bash them so they fly everywhere. 
So just very gently grind them like this. As soon as you start to break those spices up, that's where the oils are inside them. And that's what you can smell. Those lovely aromatics and the lovely oils start to be released. And by those aromatics being released, that is what you're looking for. Sorry about the noise. That's what you're looking to add to your food, those lovely aromatics. Right, I'm just gonna move this over. There we go. Is that better? Making all kinds of tangy noises. Right. Right, is everyone still with me? We all together. Now the other dish we're doing today is a lemon rice. Um, which is a really nice, zingy way to sort of perk up your rice. I know I've done a few different rice dishes with you, and this is, again, very different as well, but it's a really lovely one to do, especially at this time of the year for barbecues and that kind of thing. Um, and I'll show you how to make that in a minute. Okay, so all I'm doing at the moment is I'm grinding up my coriander seeds. I'm gonna just show you what it looks like in here. So that at the moment is just coriander. The thing with coriander seeds is that when you grind them, they go almost feathery. And you'll never, ever, ever really get it to a fine powder. But the flavour will be in there, which is really lovely. So just try and grind it as much as you can. I'm going to now add my cumin seeds. So three teaspoons of cumin seeds. Two if you're using pre-ground. And now you'll start to see what I mean by this actually quite a lot of spices for one dish. And the reason for that is it comes back to the fact that it's this backwards curry. So normally, I hope those have who have joined me in the past, um, when I talk about doing a masala and cooking your onions and so on, the depth and flavor and all of that comes from the way in which you cook your onions. Because we're not doing that with this dish, you need to add another little bit of oomph. You need to get that decadence and that deliciousness from somewhere um, and there's little tweaks that I, I make to make sure that comes through. And that, one of those is just increasing the spices just a little bit. And the, got, oh, I've got George, some questions. George from Croydon is saying hello. Hi George from Croydon, just up the road from me. Welcome, lovely to have you. Hi Jennifer from Hong Kong, goodness me, all the way from Hong Kong. I hope you are all well. I hope things are calming down over there at the moment. I think uh, we're all sort of hoping to get back into some kind of new normality. Um, welcome, thank you for joining me. Let me know again if you're cooking or if you're just watching, if you're just here to pick up hints and tips, that's perfectly okay. Okay, so is everyone with me? The spices smells incredible. It just is one of my favourite, favourite things in the world, just grinding up those spices. I'm just going to show you the inside of my pestle and mortar. So that's what I've got. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to what I was saying earlier. Um, because this is a slightly different way of cooking this dish we are doing things in a slightly odd order so we need to make sure that we get the unctuousness we get that deliciousness into this dish and we're doing that in two different or in different ways one is by increasing the spices slightly and two is by using ghee okay um, and that's going to give it a real sort of depth if you are vegan then you can substitute the ghee out for coconut um, oil instead or just use a, a normal oil, a rapeseed oil or something like that. Um, obviously, if you use coconut oil, it's going to give it a slight coconut flavour. So just be mindful of that. Before I move on, I just want to show you inside the pan, so my lamb. 
Now, as soon as I take that lid off, it smells amazing. Now, can you see the moisture and the liquid and the juices ah, that's, that are coming out? Hang on, I'm gonna, I just need to get a tea towel, it's quite hot. It has just come off the uh, stove. Can you see, uh, can you see the moisture and the juices and the deliciousness? Now, if you have got your pan, I just encourage you to just take the lid off and just smell because it's so, so potent and delicious. Um, someone's asked, they're just watching, but why not grind the um, coriander together? Would it have a negative effect on the spices? No, no, no. So I have ground um, the cumin and coriander together, but I've just done it in two stages. So I did the... Um, Coriander first because that takes a little bit more grinding. So I put that in first. If you put all the spices in together and you're trying to grind it up, you're, you're um, one, the volume of spices in the thing becomes too much to, to start that process. So all I'm doing is just step by step, just getting my coriander seeds ground down first because I know they take a little bit longer and then add the cumin in. So it's not about the flavor or anything. It's just about the um the fineness of how you can get them because you won't be able to get them as fine if you put more volume in there if that makes sense are you going to use fennel seeds as well um no fennel seeds in this dish no there's um we're not using any fennel at all in this one the main spices are coriander and cumin so once your spices are ground up they are in here and what we're going to do is just pop on if you've got a wok or just another pan just get that on. First thing I'm going to do is add my ghee to this because I want this dish to have a little bit of unctuousness, a little bit of deliciousness and I'm going to get that from my ghee. But as I said earlier, if you don't want to use ghee, just use oil. That's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to try and tweak tease this out now I don't want to lose all of my juice from my tomatoes I want that to go in so I'm going to be very careful as to when I put it in so tomatoes are going to go in with the ghee and we're just going to let those start to cook down um, we are aiming for them to turn into a really nice thick pulp um, and as they start to cook, once they start to break down a little bit, we'll add our spices to the pan. So this person's using goat that was previously frozen from the shops and it's let off loads of water. Should I let that evaporate first or keep the lid on and let it evaporate later? So um, that moisture and that liquid, just leave it in your pan. Just let that simmer away slowly. That's what it's going to cook in. That's what it's going to steam in. So just let that just do its thing. Um, that should be fine. Okay, so once your ghee is nice and warm, as I said, I've got loads of juice here and I don't want to lose it. So I'm just going to have to tease this very carefully without spilling it uh, into my pan. Okay, so my tomatoes go in and you should get a really lovely satisfying sizzle when those tomatoes hit that hot ghee. So the tomatoes are in, I've still got my chilies here, I'm going to just use my spoon to give them a little stir. Now what we're aiming for with this dish is a really thick tomato based masala and then when the onions go in um, we will sort of turn it up a little bit so that they start to cook down and they just entwine themselves around that lovely soft tender meat um, and you can cook your onions until they're really really soft or you can cook them until they've still got a bit of a crunch and a bit of a bite to them and that's personal preference really. Um, but that's what we're aiming for. The reason that this kind of a dish is cooked in a gray is because the style of cooking that you tend to do when you're using a gray is you're end, or you're trying to end up with a slightly drier dish. Uh, 
dry has very negative connotations in the English food world, but I don't mean dry as in dry and not very pleasant. I mean that it's not got a th it's not got a gravy, it's not got a sauce. It's actually got a really nice um, unctuous sauce that's sort of stuck to the meat and it's holding on to the meat. If you prefer your curries with a little bit more gravy, you can then add some hot water once that's done and then just let it down a little bit. But again, personal choice. Okay, so my tomatoes are in the pan. Um, is this a difficult recipe to do? Someone's asked. And then can I use gingerly oil? I don't know gingerly oil. Yeah, you can use gingerly oil if you want to. It's quite strong. It can be quite harsh. So do it sparingly if that's what you've got. Um, so one of the questions was, is this a hard recipe? I don't think so. I think this is probably one of the easiest recipes to do because it's actually quite, it's quite straightforward and quite simple. Very little in the way of chopping or um, prepping and getting lots of things ready. Um, as you saw what I did, literally just throwing in your whole spot, you know, your ginger and everything into your meat. Let that cook down, get the flavours into there and then you make your masala, which is really easy. Um, so, yeah, not that difficult, I would say. Um, once lockdown is over, will you still be offering lessons? Um, so once lockdown is over, at the moment, the plan is to continue doing these Friday night curry clubs. Absolutely more than happy to. Um, what I might need to do is potentially change the times of when I do them. Um, it really depends on... Um, one, you guys, how many people are available, are people still watching and that kind of thing. Oh, sorry, did you, do, you mean, do you mean classes as in private classes? Yep, yep, I'll still be doing those um, depending on when I can fit them in and so on. Yes, I will be. Um, I'm still doing them at various cookery schools. Oh, I will be once lockdown is eased, but I know that some of those are starting in August. But yes, yeah, I will be. Okay, so my tomatoes are starting to... I'm going to show you what they look like because I suppose it's quite important to see how they start to break down. So they look quite creamy almost, quite thick. But that's what I mean by them breaking down. Now, when you've got tomatoes are starting to break down, we're going to go in and add a few other ingredients. So into that... I'm going to add my turmeric, a teaspoon of. I'm also going to add my chilli powder. And you, again, with the chilli powder, you don't need to add a lot. I'm just probably going to put half a teaspoon in for now. It's primarily the colour that I'm looking for with the, with the chilli powder. I'm going to add my chopped chilies as well. And I'm going to add those ground spices, so your coriander and your cumin. So that goes in. I'm going to pop this to one side now. Right, so give your masala a stir through and you'll see the colour changes. And it starts to look a little bit more like a masala. But we still want those tomatoes to break down. It's really important come back to the thing that I say every week, you've got intrinsic acidity in those tomatoes and what we don't want to end up with is a tomato sauce. What we want is a masala, so you, that acidity needs to break down, otherwise you will just end up with a spiced tomato sauce, which is not what we're looking for. Right. There we go. Now use your spoon, just give it a little bash, just to break them up if you need to. I'm going to come back and have a look at my lamb in a minute as well. Now I haven't put any salt in the masala yet because we added some salt to the lamb. So once we put the lamb and the masala together, I'll taste it and then see if I need to adjust it. I don't want to... Victor has said hi from Melbourne, Australia, it's 4am in the morning. Hi Victor from Australia, amazing to have you join us, 4am in Melbourne and you're online, are you just back from work or are you, or did you wait up specially to, uh, to cook along with me and to watch, 
It's, it is quite impressive. We're getting quite a lot of people from the US, um, from Australia, who are really keen um, cooks and are really enjoying these live cook-alongs. So even with the time difference, I'm very, very grateful to you guys for joining and watching and chatting with me. I really appreciate your time. Okay, so my masala is looking like that i still can tell that my tomato if i show you so i've still got chunky bits of the tomato i don't i want those to break down so i'm just going to let that cook and whilst you are there i'm just going to show you the inside of my lamb so if you look at how much liquid has come through look at that and that is all the juices and the deliciousness from the meat. And we've added nothing into that. And this is why it's not going to catch or stick to the bottom of the pan, because all of that flavour comes from the meat. Um, is it okay if your tomatoes have gone very squishy? Yep, that's exactly what we want. We want our tomatoes to get squishy. We want the masala to be lovely and smooth and broken down. So absolutely, that's exactly what we're looking for what I am going to do my color doesn't look right I'm going to add a little bit more turmeric there we go so just break that down now whilst my masala is doing what it needs to do. Um, I am going to just move my chili over here. I'm going to just have a very quick look at my lamb and I'm just going to check it and I'll show you how I'm going to check it. So I'm just going to get a fork. There's two things that I tend to do. One, um, I'll try and squash the lamb on the, uh, sorry, I'll start again. One thing I'll do is I will try and squash the garlic cloves that are in there on the side of the pan. If they squish very, very easily, pretty much means that your lamb's almost there. And then the other thing I'm going to do is just take out a piece of lamb and just show you. So what I mean, so there's the garlic. I'm just going to pop it on the side of the pan and squish it. So it's still got a bit of bite to it so that I don't think my lamb is going to be ready yet. So I'm now I'm going to take out a piece and just have a look at it and all I'm going to do is just with a knife I'm just going to cut it through and I'm going to I'm going to taste it that's actually if used, not bad if you used a pressure cooker would it speed up the masala so um, the question was if you use a pressure cooker it will speed up the process and I have done it in a pressure cooker I just don't think it gives as much flavor because it doesn't have the time to absorb the ginger and the garlic and those flavors it does it very very quickly and absolutely if that's what you want to do um, then give it a go um, it will work I just think it gives a slightly better flavor once it's What's the problem? Got a problem. Someone's asked, well, one person's asked, are you from India? And another person has said, do the crew get to enjoy this meal? <laughs> Is that okay? I'm just sort of sorting my microphone out. Um, so one of the questions is, am I Indian? Yeah. Um, I am Indian, but I was born and brought up in the UK. Uh, my parents came over from India to the UK in the 60s, so I have lived my whole life in the UK, but brought up very much um, in an Indian household um, with Indian food and Indian culture and religion and all of that kind of stuff. So I do consider myself Indian, um, but as I say, I am born and bred in the UK. So a bit of a a bit of a mixture, I guess, if if that's if that's what you want to call me, that's fine. Um, and what was the other was there another 
question? Do the crew get to enjoy the Do food? Do the crew get to enjoy the food at the end? Well, the crew are actually my family, so if I don't feed my family, I'm in a lot of trouble. Um, so yes, they do, they, they get to enjoy it. Um, and when I work with other crews, they all get to enjoy it. I think that's the whole point of a lot of people who I've filmed with in the past. They love filming with me because I'm so generous when it comes to it. But that, that's, for me, it's, it, it's all part of why you do it. You enjoy feeding people, which is why you enjoy cooking. So, yes, everyone gets to enjoy it. So what I'm going to do is my onion. I'm just going to get that ready and you can do this in however suits you. Um, I like to have nice sort of rings sliced. If you don't like it like that, then thin slices will do. Um, it's really, really up to you, but I'm going to have round rings today because that's what I'm feeling like. So as thin, you know, not too thin, but as thin as you can get them. You don't want them too chunky, unless you like chunky onions, that's fine too. But um, if I show you, so that sort of thin slice is what we're looking for. And I'm gonna do that with the whole onion. I'm using one here. I can't remember if I say one or two in the recipe. Just take the end off as well. But if you like more, you can add another onion as well. I have got another small one on standby because I do like my onion. Right, so that's sliced. Now what I want you to do is just break those rings up a little bit so that you've got individual pieces of the onion. Don't throw them on the floor like I have. Right. There we go, give that a wash. Okay, any more questions while I'm just getting these bits and bobs ready to go into my lamb? Have we had any new joiners from anywhere new in the world? It's always lovely to welcome new people. Um, whilst I've got a bit of time, I guess I will tell you that if you are cooking with me, please take photographs. Um, there's a few of you who uh, used to me and, and, and know what I like. So please do take pictures whilst you're cooking, take pictures of your final dish and then share them with me either on Instagram um, or my app. If you haven't got my app, then just go to the um, uh, App Store on both Android and Apple. Just go to the App Store, um, search for Harry Gotra, which is me. Um, and then download the um, app, it's free, and it's just full of lots of recipes, lots of video content, but what's amazing about the app is there's an amazing community of people who, I know some of you are here, I know Sue's here, um, there's a lot of you, and Steve, I know you're on it as well, there's a big community of people who share their ideas, who share their pictures, who talk about recipes, um, who ask for advice and they're a really good network of people to get to know if you love your food. Do you ever rinse your onions before cooking them? So if I'm cooking my onions then I tend not to rinse them. If I was doing a salad what I then tend to do is I will soak my onions in a little bit of salted water and that just takes the acrid um, taste away or the harshness of the onions away. But if I'm cooking with them, there's no need to do that because that's what the heat's going to do in the pan. Okay, so my masala is looking pretty good and pretty broken down now. So I'm going to just show you very quickly how it's cooked down. And hopefully you'll be able to see. And then we'll go back to the lamb now. So look at that. Really vibrant, really beautiful. Are we back? Oh, we've lost that, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I think we're back. I don't know what happened there. My apologies. I'm very, very sorry. That's never happened before. We did have a bit of a storm going over, and I don't know whether it was that, but that's very, very odd. Um, can you let me know if we are back? Hello, everyone. Please say hello again and make sure that you're there. I know we've lost a few people, and I'm so sorry about that. Um, so, 
just getting back to where we were, I was showing you what the masala looked like um, and is looking the same. Um, we're going to now move on to the lamb. So my lamb is looking pretty good and I'm just going to get a cloth to show you the inside of my pan. Now what I did, because I didn't realise that we'd gone off, so if you look, that's what it looks like. Okay, there's a lot of moisture in there. So what I'm going to want you to do is just with a fork, please let me know if you're still cooking with me or if you've passed this bit or whatever so I can catch up. Um, with your fork, very gently squash the garlic cloves that are in there. Just use your fork and if they break and and break down very very easily then it's, your lamb is pretty much ready so we're just going to squish the garlic into the sauce that's in there and what I want you to do is just take out a little piece of lamb or your meat give it a slice and I want you to taste it and you should taste it should taste really amazing because it's really garlicky really gingery and you've got some lovely flavour in there, but it's really tender now. That's lovely. Okay. Everybody still with me? Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a slotted spoon and I'm going to get the lamb out. And I'm going to put it into my masala. Okay. And I'm going to turn up my masala pan. And just add that meat in there. Yum. It should smell amazing. Now, don't get rid of that water. That is your stock. That's a lot of flavour in there, but I'm not going to add it quite yet. Now, what I want you to do is just cover your meat in the masala. Turn your cooker up to a really nice high heat and start to coat all of the meat in that really delicious masala. There we go. Now, when it's all coated and it's all covered, we're then going to add our onions, our sliced onions and the chilies that have been sliced long in lengthways. Those go in as well. So get those onions in. Now this is what I meant by the fact it's a backwards curry. Your onions are going in right at the end, which is very unusual. So just use your spoon and just start to turn them over. Oh, it should smell incredible. It's really yummy and it's really fresh looking. Now into this, just to help those onions cook down, what I want to do is just add a little bit of that stock that this lamb has cooked in because there's a lot of flavour in there. So just pour some of that in. Now if you like your curries with a little bit of sauce, a little bit of gravy, then by all means you can add the whole lot. But let's just see how we go first. I do eat curry with homemade chapatis. I make my own ruddies. Um, we've made our naans a few times on the show here. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that's what it's all about. There's um, a video on how to make rotis and how to make puris and all of that because we've done that together. Right, so, if I show you the inside of my pan, can you just pick this up? I just want to show you the inside of my pan. I'll just show you how much juice I've got left as well. Um, so my curry, my grai, is looking nice and dry, but I am going to add a little bit more of this into here because I want that lovely flavour. I like my onions with a little bit of a crunch, but not too raw. So that's going to go in. There we go. 
and I'm just going to let that cook down for a little bit longer. So is everybody with me? That looks amazing. So we'll let that do its thing. Now we're going to move on to do the rice. Super quick, super easy and very, very tasty. So I'm just going to move the lamb over and let it just simmer away on a very low heat just until those onions are done. Yum. Okay, and then we're going to move on and make a rice dish. So, we've got some fun ingredients going on here as well. Is everybody making the lemon rice? Let me know if you are, because we've got some fun ingredients to add. So, I've got some peanuts. Obviously, um, if you are allergic to nuts, you miss that out. I'm also going to use some cashew nuts. I'm using a mixture. I've got some curry leaves. I know curry leaves are a little bit difficult at the moment. Um, if you can't get hold of curry leaves, just miss them out. There is a little bit of a shortage of them because of flights and all of that kind of thing. So, curry leaves. Um, the key ingredient or the key spice for this dish is mustard seeds and curry leaves and obviously lemon. So what I'm going to do is I'm using this, which is a really nice, it's coconut oil, but it's got turmeric in it. Um, and because this is a, a golden rice, I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to use this. So I'm just going to heat up Okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the coconut oil. If you're doing plain rice, absolutely fine. We've talked about that. If you've got any questions about rice, now's your opportunity. So do shout. So into your coconut oil, mustard seeds. I'm going to add a teaspoon of mustard seeds and we're going to get them so they pop. Once they pop, then they're potent and they're ready for um, the next ingredient. Um, this is gonna cook quite quickly because obviously I, as I said before, I've got my rice that I um, made beforehand. If you haven't cooked your rice yet, what I would suggest is you make this mixture, your um, lemon mixture, and then just keep, set it to one side, make your rice. Once your rice is done, you then mix the um, coconut and lemon mixture in with your cooked rice. So don't worry if you haven't made your rice yet. So um, into here, I'm going to also add my curry leaves. So they go in. We'll give that a little bit of a stir. So we want these to pop. I'm also just going to use this. Oh, the lamb's looking really good. Can you tell me if yours is pretty much cooked and it's, it's there now? It should be there. And into that, we are going to add some nuts. So I've got, I'm literally going to put in a handful of coke, um, a handful of peanuts and a handful of cashew nuts. It just adds a really nice texture. But whenever you're cooking nuts like this, do be very, very careful because they can catch on the bottom of the pan um, and they will burn very quickly. So you need, just need to be a bit mindful and a bit careful. You can use dried curry leaves. If you've got dried curry leaves, in fact, I've been saying to a number of people over throughout the week that if you don't have curry leaves, it's fine. Just get some dried curry leaves. I sell them on the website. I sell them on the app. They're just really good to have in your cupboard, especially at the moment where it's just so hard to get hold of them. So dried curry leaves are absolutely spot on. Um, someone's just said their goat still needs a bit of extra time stewing, so they have added yeah so if your goat is still um just let it cook let it cook until it's really tender and you're happy with it then um your masala is ready so you just mix the two together so just um, give it time don't don't and panic a couple of questions, couple of questions. um so what's a good substitute for curry leaves um, I have mentioned this before, if you don't have curry leaves, miss them out. There's no point adding anything else in. Um, I'm just going to add my nuts in because my mustard seeds are going nuts in the pan. Um, someone's asked, how long have you been cooking? 
I have been cooking all my life practically. Um, so I have been cooking professionally, I guess, for 10 odd years. Um, I've worked in restaurants, um, but then I set up the Harry Gotra business probably about 10, 15 years ago. And that has been all kinds of different things from um, consultancy work um, to lessons, classes, I work at cookery schools, I do lots of work for various, various different organisations. So, um, yeah, all my life pretty much. But I also work for Virgin Atlantic, I do their f the food and beverage for Virgin Atlantic as well. So, okay, so I just want to show you inside my pan. So the nuts are starting to get a little bit golden. Once they are golden, then we need to be very careful that they don't burn. I just want to ship. Okay. Mine's looking a bit yellow already because I've got that turmeric oil that I'm using. Okay. Now, into there, I've got my rice, which I've already cooked. If you haven't got your rice ready and cooked yet, all I would suggest is you turn this once your nuts get nice and golden, turn them off, add some turmeric to it and add your lemon juice and just let that sit to one side. Also, you can add your chilies. If you're adding chilies, not everybody needs to. You don't have to add chilies to this because you've got a nice bit of spice in the, in the curry. But if you are, then put up your chilies in. Um, is there any must-have kitchen essentials that last a long time and just good to throw in stuff like bread masala? Yep, so garam masala is always one. Always have some garam masala. I would always say have cumin seeds. Cumin seeds are probably the most commonly used Indian spice. Um, if you can, fenugreek or methi. It's my personal favourite. Um, and as I always say, these are my seven key spices that I would always have. Um, to make most dishes. So in the rice, so I've put my rice in, as you can see. Now into this, I'm going to add some turmeric. So a good sprinkling of turmeric goes in. That's where you get that lovely sunshine. I was supposed to have added it to the oil, which is where ideally you want to put it. If you don't have turmeric oil, what should you use? Just use coconut oil. Coconut oil, um, obviously not everyone's going to have that oil. I just thought I'd use it today. Um, just use coconut oil. That's what I would normally, that's why it says in the recipe. So just coconut oil. Now once that's in there, I'm going to add my lemon. Now with lemon rice, if you don't like something too citrusy, don't put too much lemon in. So I'm just going to put squeeze in. Um, Just less than half a lemon there. If you don't have green chilies for the rice, can I use red chilli flakes? You can, but only if you want it with a bit of kick. Yep, yeah, use red chilli flakes or just miss them out. Miss, miss it out. That's absolutely fine to do. All right. So that should be... So I quite often call this sunshine in a bowl just because it looks so beautiful. It's so vibrant. It's such a lovely little side dish to do. And that's it, that's your lemon rice done. And I'm just going to show you what that looks like. It's that beautiful, vibrant yellow from the turmeric, but you've got those lovely nuts in there for a little bit of bite, and you've got the curry leaves um, in there. It gives it lovely freshness and color, but the... Um, the bite also comes from the mustard seed. So a really lovely little side dish to do. And as I said at the beginning, great for barbecues and that kind of thing. So that's your lemon rice done. Um, actually, we haven't seasoned it. So as always, a little bit of salt goes into that. And then give that a little stir. And then what I would encourage you to do with the lemon rice is taste it. If you want a little bit more citrus in there, just squeeze a little bit more lemon juice in there. And then that is done. So, coming back to the curry, it should pretty much be there. The Does onions. It have to be coconut oil or can I use another? 
Um, the only reason I use coconut oil with this rice dish is because it's a South Indian style dish um, and South Indian flavours include that coconut. Obviously, if you don't have it, just use what you've got in your cupboard. Um, there's no sort of rights or wrongs. It just lends itself to, 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 the, to those sort of flavours. Okay, having a little clear down, getting rid of all the bits that I don't need to. And then I'm going to look at my lamb. That looks amazing. So this is what I am hoping for. And this is what I'm hoping your dishes will look like as well. So if I show you, oh, that is what we're hoping for. Lamb grey with nice chunky bits of onion where the sauce has just entwined all around the meat and around the onions and the whole big chilies are in there as well. So that's what we're looking for. Just to finish that off, as always, I'm just going to plate it up for you just so I can show you what it should look like. And I'm just going to add some fresh coriander. And what I might do also, there we go. Just slice up your coriander really nice and finely, as we do always. Perfect. And um, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit into the dish and then I'll keep a little bit for the garnish. So, just to plate this up for you and just to finish off our Friday night curry club, um, I am going to share with you my lemon rice, which I would really urge you, if you're having a barbecue over the weekend and you're gonna do some anything from like tandoori chicken to kebabs anything like that if you're looking for a side dish it's always salad or something like that but this delicious little rice dish it just works so well and it's so fragrant and it's so summery it's my sunshine in a bowl dish do you really need to put coriander on top if you don't like it if you don't like coriander, so coriander in Indian food is more than just a garnish. It is about that final touch of love that you give it. There are a lot of people who have either a genetic aversion to coriander or just they just don't like it. If you don't like it, then miss it out. Obviously, I'm never, ever going to tell you to add something to a dish that you don't like. So absolutely, if you do not like it, then miss it out. There's no point adding something that you think is going to spoil it for you and here we have the lovely lamb grey my backwards curry with really beautifully in, you know delicate lamb that's been infused with ginger and garlic Someone's asked, have I missed you putting in the aromatic spices? Um, so the aromatic spices, the coriander, um, the ground coriander and the ground cumin went in when the tomatoes had broken down in the masala, um, along with chilies and turmeric. Okay, so there you go. There is our final dish. I'm hoping you can see it from there. I'm just checking uh, this way. Hang on. Right. So there we go. There is a graiwali lamb. And as I said, beautifully sort of infused with ginger and garlic. Some lovely chilies in there. It's got a nice kick to it, but the sauce is so thick and it's just smothered all around that really really tender meat it's a lovely way to tenderize your meat and some zingy lemon rice that's cooked 
really simply, really easily, but it's a really lovely way of getting a bit of zing into your dish. And there we have it. So there we go. There's our Friday night curry club done. How long did that take? What, just over an hour. And that was with me chit chatting a lot. Um, so if you are worried about Indian food taking a long time to cook and um, all these preconceived ideas that Indian food is so hard to make, it's really not. It's just about having the confidence to do it. And hopefully by cooking with me, and um, working with me and working through the recipes um, and asking me questions, hopefully that gives you a little bit more confidence in your kitchen to try and create these amazing flavors. Um, I hope you've enjoyed you the curry club. Need to put garam masala on the top. Um, I, I probably do need to put a little bit of garam masala on the top. I missed it out, didn't I? Thank you for pointing that out. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit in here actually as well. So a little bit of garam masala can go in. Ideally, I should have put that in there. So we can do that. A little bit of garam masala just to bring all of those flavours together. Um, so that was Friday Night Curry Club. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm very, very sorry about the disruption halfway through. It's just one of those things. These things happen. Um, the video will be available straight after um, we finish tonight and it will be up on YouTube so you can watch it and hopefully again cook along. Um, please do take lots of pictures of your final flitter final finished dish um, and share them with me either on Instagram, either through the app, um, on Twitter, wherever you might be. Um, make sure you like the video and make sure you subscribe. We need to get more of you subscribing so that we can um, continue to do what we're doing. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had fun. But more importantly, I hope you get to have a really delicious